In this tutorial, I'm going to go through the follow position and follow rotation properties of the dynamics tag to create this uh, interesting effect. So I'm just going to start by creating a cloner and I'm going to give this a cube as a child. I'm going to make the cube a bit smaller, maybe 22 centimeters. And I'm going to go to the cloner. Under mode, I'm going to choose grid array and I'm going to set the count to five in each row. Just going to change my display to hidden line. Um, I'm going to select the cloner and add a rigid body tag. So I've got a shortcut here, but it's under tags, simulation tags, rigid body. And I basically want each cloner to act individually. So I'm just going to click on the dynamics tag and go to collision. Inherit tag, I'm going to set to apply tag to children. And individual elements, I'm going to set it to all. So when I play this back, the whole thing falls down. So I'm just going to set the project gravity on the project settings to a zero. It's under dynamics and gravity, I'm just going to set it to zero. So everything floats. Okay, so I'm just going to add some more keyframes to my simulation. Frames, sorry. So 500 frames. And I'm just going to play this back. So I'm just going to click on cloner while it's playing back and I'm going to move it. And as you can see, nothing happens. So I'm just going to rewind this and I'm going to click on the dynamics tag again. And I'm going to go to the force tab here. So we have these two properties, very useful, follow position and follow rotation. So basically, um, if I set this to say 10, and play back the animation. Now, when I move the cloner, nothing happens. All right, should happen. Yeah, sometimes you need to stop the animation and start it again. So basically I'm moving this cloner uh, object and the clones are following. So I'm just gonna make this effect less extreme. So maybe go down to four, stop it, rewind, play, and we've got more of a delay effect going on. So that's a pretty cool um, effect and essentially this is a uh, keyframes. So basically uh, when I play back this animation and I move the cloner, it, this is effectively keyframes and it's basically splitting the ratio between kind of fully automatic dynamics and my keyframe animation. So we could use this uh, to make quite a cool effect. So I'm just going to create a sphere in the middle here and I'm going to give that a rigid body tag. And I'm going to make this a static mesh. So basically if gravity was turned on, it's just going to stay there. And um, it's basically like a stubborn kind of obstacle. So I'm just going to set dynamic to off like this and then play the simulation again. Click on cloner didn't work. So we can basically see the cloners wrapping around the sphere, which is a pretty cool effect. And um, we can make this sphere invisible. And we can just see the outline there. I'm just going to play this back again. You can see the outline. And um, Follow rotation basically um, forces these clones to go back to the original rotation, which is kind of upright. So I'm just going to add some follow rotation as well. Maybe make these six each. Stop the animation, play it back. And you can see the clones are a bit more, um, well, better behaved because they're trying to keep the, follow the rotation of the original state. So I'm just going to play this back. And we get this really nice effect. I can increase the size of the sphere like that. All, I can do all of this while uh, the animation is playing in real time, which is very cool. That's why I use Cinema 4D, basically. So that's the end of this uh, brief tutorial. And uh, thanks for watching.